Wellness works navigating physical and mental well-being. This is the first in a series of videos where we're going to be diving into this all-important subject of well-being. I truly believe that the future of well-being is already here. And in this video, I really want to unpack some of the differences between health and fitness, well-being, wellness, and what does it really take for us to transform our well-being. So why don't we actually start off with a definition of what wellness actually is? Well, you can go and Google it. There's a couple of meanings I absolutely love about this word. And really, one of them is deliberate effort. What are we doing with deliberate effort, which is, means it's our conscious choice to improve our mental and physical health? Isn't that fascinating? Another definition I, I really like is, it's what we do to prolong our lives and to prevent ourselves from getting a disease that we probably don't want. I think that most people are playing the game of, I don't want to die. Most people are playing that game, right? Think about it, you don't cross the road and not look. You don't pick up a bottle that says poisonous and drink it. You're playing that game of not wanting to die, but really, do you want to live? And then of course you want to live, but how do you want to live? My goal has always been since a very, very early age. In fact, I remember one of my first memories was actually watching my mum, who was a serial dieter. Uh, I just remember her going on off, diet after diet. And, you know, were people losing weight because they wanted to be healthy or were they losing weight because of a, a way they wanted to, to look? Mm, I mean, again, this is really fascinating. This is one of the big definitions or the differences between health and fitness and wellness. For me, health and fitness, as a health and fitness professional that I became in 1989, and I think as I look back, I think part of what I wanted to do was to find a solution for weight loss because I saw my mum struggling. I saw her struggle for years. I saw her go on diet after diet. I saw all the gizmos and all the gadgets that she had. She was a hoarder. She collected it all. And I saw her standing on these, these, this thing called scales and I would see her emotional state be massively affected by what the scales said one day. She, I didn't understand. I remember, I remember getting on the scales myself, waiting for something to happen. But of course, nothing happened. <laughs> But she chose by what the number said to make a choice about how she felt. And um, I've got a number of the books I've written here. Look, this was a book I wrote in um, 1998. This was called Slimming with Pete. Um, no one would publish this book when I first wrote it. But uh, eventually I found uh, a small publisher. They published it. And then I found an amazing lady who completely changed my life. A lady called Amanda Ursel, uh, a dietitian, uh, so someone who reviewed diet books in the Sunday Times and she wrote by the end of this book you'll be in danger of having changed your eating habits taken up regular exercise and discovered you're a pretty wonderful person and I'm sure you can imagine that if that's printed uh, nationally all of a sudden I started to get a, a lot of people wanting me to help them lose weight and that's why all these other books came about by the biggest publishing houses in the world sort your life out uh, this this was lighten up this was a uh, uh, fear busting, uh, habit busting, books published in multiple languages. Look, habit busting published in uh, Korean because I've been obsessed with trying to find solutions to the problems that people have. And one of the greatest uh, achievements I ever had was actually helping my mum get to a place where it was all about her health and she got her weight down to a healthier weight and she stopped dieting. What an, an amazing uh, achievement. But really, when I look at navigating and helping you navigate this space in this first video in this series, I'd really like you just to wake up to the, to the fact of, look, I'm sure you don't want to die. You want to live. But how do you want to live? How would you like to leave this earth? One of the greatest books ever written, The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The first habit is to be proactive. And just you watching this, this video is a statement that you want to be proactive. 
right? It's, it's, it's a big statement, isn't it? In a world where we're not short of information, there's so many people that could give you similar information to me. Why are you listening to this? You're obviously listening to it because there's something here that I'm saying that you're resonating with. Something that's making you just stop for a moment and think, because the second habit is to begin with the end in mind. So how would you like to play out your life? Because most people are creating futures they don't want. As we're playing the game of I don't want to die, most people are dying by what they're doing every single day that slowly is going to create a future they don't want that is going to result in disease. I mean, I've done a lot of work in the field of diabetes. I've always been fascinated in it, which is kind of interesting because I found myself in a pre-diabetic state recently. I was eating way too much sugar. I was taking huge solids from the fact that my wife had passed away, you know, um, it was horrendous, absolutely horrendous, but I was taking comfort from food, specifically chocolate. But it got to a point where my health was not good. I was peeing too much. Some of you who follow me, you already know this story. But diabetes doesn't happen overnight. Type two diabetes doesn't happen overnight. It happens as elevated sugar in the bloodstream over an extended period of time. There's now a new term in the medical literature, you can go and Google it, it's called diabetes type three. Diabetes type 3, which is basically when we have elevated blood sugar levels for 5, 10, 15, 20 years, leading to uh, problems with the brain, dementia, Alzheimer's. It's fascinating. There's another, another term in the medical literature called inflammaging, right? Which is what we do that causes inflammation in the body. Now, we always want our bodies to, to have the ability to deal with inflammation but most of us are creating too much inflammation by how we live our lives. So the first thing is, let's wake up. I don't want to die, but let's look at how we're living and how we could start to make some changes. Would you like to start making some changes? Would you like to exit the game of life maybe in your sleep? That's what I want. I want to go to sleep and not wake up one day. I don't want heart disease. I don't want diabetes. I don't want cancer. I don't want to be a burden on other people. But I realize that there are behaviors that I have that affect my well-being. And it isn't just what I eat. See, the future of wellness isn't just gonna be how strong your heart is and how strong you are. It's gonna be much more around how you recover, how you sleep, but really your emotional state, how you manage emotion. Like, I could not carry on speaking like this all day because I'm not really taking the time to breathe. And when I breathe in, I'm activating the sympathetic nervous system, the, the part of my nervous system that's really good at reacting to certain situations, to fight, to flight, to freeze. But when I breathe out, I'm activating the parasympathetic nervous system. So our emotional state really affects everything. We've known for years how stress is related to heart disease and certain cancers are related to anger and but just to start off with where we are, it can be a scary place because maybe you're looking at it and going, oh my God, there's a few things here I need to address. But what will be the greatest thing you ever do? Surely one of the greatest things you will ever do is to change what goes on in here, how you think, how you feel, how you act. And I'd love to help you with that. I've dedicated my life to it. You can go and buy all the books I've written if you want. I wouldn't. I don't actually agree with some of what I said all those years ago. But I created my 30-day kickstart program that anyone can do. Because I know who I am. I know what I do. And I empower people to be empowered. Just like you. Otherwise, you would have stopped watching this. There's a part of you that doesn't want to die, that wants to live. I can help you live in a way where you've got more energy, more vitality, more fulfillment. You're investing in your future self by what you do every single day. Rather than the opposite. You're living for just today, rather than, imagine if you were living for today so you could live for tomorrow. Wow. <laughs> Again, what an incredible definition of what wellness actually could be. Look, I know you're probably doing the very best that you can, but could you do better? So let's look at where we are right now. Let's look at where you are with your energy. Let's look at where we are, where you are with your with your sleep, with your emotional state, and maybe you experience different emotions. That's part of the human experience, that we have this ability to do so much and be so much, 
but it all revolves around choices. So we're all playing the game of we don't want to die. You're not crossing the road and not looking. You look because you want to live. You don't pick up a bottle of poison and drink it. No, but you might be consciously or slightly unconsciously behaving in ways that are not serving your tomorrow and your tomorrow's tomorrow and your tomorrow's 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 tomorrow's. And you think that where you are, maybe your condition, maybe that back pain, maybe that diabetes, maybe that foggy mind, you think, well, that's just where I am. This is who I am. And I'd say no, but that's just me. What about you? Are you ready to say no? to some of where you are, to some of your circumstances? Are you ready to say no to some of your choices? Are you ready to say yes to a new era of wellness? Because if you are, I am ready to help you and support you. But let's start off with where we are. Before we go on this epic adventure, let's start off right here, right now, by looking at where am I right now? What am I doing? How am I living? And what could I possibly eliminate so I could start to live in a different way? So rather than creating disease, I could create ease. Because we're either living or we're... That's what we're going to look at in the next series of videos on this journey of navigating wellness. Our physical, mental, emotional, maybe even spiritual it's to start looking at just where we are because this is why I'm going to start to wrap this video up is I think we're all a bit pickled. I've said this to a lot of people I coach that you can't unpickle a pickle. You can't unpickle a pickled onion or maybe you can, but I don't think so. We've all been pickled. We've all grown up and we've all picked up some behaviors and ideas and thoughts and habits that have maybe pickled us along the way. I mean, look, I grew up in a world where they said, you better eat what's on your plate because there's starving children in the world. And many people today still eat everything that's on their plate because there's starving children in the world. But how did that help them? Many people grew up believing what food manufacturers said. For example, a Mars a day helps you work, rest and play. Mars would not be allowed to do that anymore. Cocoa Pops used to have a heart healthy symbol on their product. It wouldn't be allowed anymore. The future of wellness is here. And it really is about our ability to stop and wake up to really what's important. You've all, we're all pickled. We've all, that's how I see it. We, well, none of us are perfect. But when we stop and we step back and maybe we start to look at well-being from a fresh perspective, everything can change. So comment below. Let's get involved. Let's do this. My wife's motto, my wife who, when she was diagnosed with a brain tumor, she changed her diet like that. She never smoked again. She cut sugar out of her diet completely. She was amazing. And her motto for life was just get on with it. What do you want to just get on with? Improving different areas of your well-being, your health, so you can prolong your life, have more energy, have more vitality. I'd love to know. Let's consciously choose to stop dying, even though we're all dying, but we can how we live before we die. I think that's where there's opportunity for growth. What do you reckon? I'd love to know. Thank you so much for watching this video. I appreciate you. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the next video in this series around navigating our well-being, our mental, our physical, our emotional well-being. Take care.